In the last lecture, we were introduced to space group symmetry and the International Tables for Crystallography, and we spent most of the time talking about examples from the monoclinic crystal system. In this lecture, we're going to look much more briefly at the other crystal systems. Let's start with a reminder of the seven different crystal systems that we encounter in three dimensions. Each of those seven crystal systems has a certain symmetry element that is required. It is a characteristic element of that crystal system. So for example, we've been talking about the monoclinic, and we saw in the monoclinic that we have to either have a two-fold axis, or two sub one screw, or a mirror plane, or glide. Or we could have both, but if we have both, the mirror plane has to be perpendicular to the two-fold rotation axis. And that led us to these three point groups. Uh, here are the symmetry elements for the other crystal systems. In the orthorhombic crystal system, we have either two-fold rotation axes or mirror planes in each of the three orthogonal directions. In a trigonal crystal system, the highest rotation axis is a three-fold axis. In a hexagonal crystal system, we have a six-fold rotation axis, and that occurs only in hexagonal crystal systems. In a tetragonal crystal system, we have a four-fold axis that is parallel to one of the lattice directions, uh, by convention the C lattice vector. And then in a cubic crystal system, the defining symmetry element would be a three-fold rotation axis along each of the body diagonals. Now, in a cubic crystal system, we might also have a four-fold rotation axis, but that is not required to be cubic. So, if we think about the way that we organize the names of the space groups and the way that we displayed them in the international tables, in the monoclinic case, we looked you know, down the A, B, and C axes, and the long space group name contained the symmetry elements along the A, B, and C directions. But that approach wouldn't necessarily make sense for some of the other crystal systems. For example, in a cubic crystal system, the symmetry along A, B, and C all have to be the same. So it, it wouldn't tell us very much if we only saw the symmetry elements that were in those directions. And that leads us to different ways of specifying the name of the space group and representing the symmetry elements in the international tables. Here's what I mean. We talked about the monoclinic. You know, so we looked at space group P 2 sub 1 over C, right? And that 2 sub 1 over C, that was the screw axis and glide plane that are both associated with the B lattice vector by convention for monoclinic. If we go to uh, orthorhombic, we keep something very similar, but we have more options for symmetry. So in an orthorhombic crystal, we have first a letter that signifies the kind of lattice centering, or lack thereof. And then we have the symmetry elements parallel to the A axis, to the B axis, and to the C axis. But when we get to even more symmetric crystal systems, it starts to get a little bit more complicated to work out the name of the space group. And I'm going to walk you through with pictures how we deal with these more symmetric space groups. OK, let's start with an orthorhombic. So here is a very common space group. Its short name is PNMA. And its long name is P 2 sub 1 over N, 2 sub 1 over M, 2 sub 1 over A. So one of the things we see in an orthorhombic space group is that whenever we have a two-fold rotation axis or 2 sub 1 screw, and then we have a, a mirror or a glide plane perpendicular to it, in the short name, we only write the mirror or the glide plane. We don't write the rotation axis. So if we drop our screw axes here, the long name becomes the short name, PNMA. Now, let's just see if we can find these symmetry elements on our drawing. Here, the drawing that is in the upper left-hand side would be looking down the C-axis. This would be the projection onto the AB plane. The projection, or the drawing that is in the upper right, that's looking down the B-axis, and then the drawing that is in the 
lower left is looking down the a-axis. So we see here that we should have a 2 sub 1 screw axis that is parallel to the a-axis and then a perpendicular end glide. Let's see if we can find the symmetry elements in these diagrams that are associated with a-axis. So let's see if we can find the symmetry elements associated with the a-axis. I'm not going to focus here on the two sub one screws because all three axes have a two sub one screw, but let's see if we can find the glide planes. Uh, the glide plane here, an N glide, remember that's a diagonal glide, that's going to be perpendicular to the A axis. So if we look in this lower left, uh, which is looking down the A axis, we see this symbol up here in the corner. Uh, that is our glide plane. And, and it's shown up in the corner because that means that the glide plane is parallel to the projection we're looking at. It's in the BC plane. And the arrow here, notice being uh, diagonal, tells us that the translation has elements of both the B and the C direction. And that's what we should have for an N glide, for a diagonal glide. If we look in the other two projections, we see this dash dot line, which intersects the a-axis at uh, three-quarter and one-quarter. And the dash dot line means that after we do the reflection, we have a glide translation that is, first of all, in the plane of the projection, for example, here in the B direction, and then out of the plane of the projection, out toward us, which would be in the C direction. And uh, we have the same thing going on in this projection over here. Notice once again that the glide planes are perpendicular to the A axis, which is horizontal in this projection. Associated with the B axis, we have a mirror plane. Okay, and so the mirror plane is very similar, but as I mentioned in the last lecture, when the mirror plane is perpendicular to the projection, as it is here, we just draw a solid line. And we see the same thing also looking in the BC plane. But in the AC plane, right, where the B axis is coming out at us, the mirror plane actually lies in the AC plane. And we can see that it's elevated by one quarter of the unit cell above the basal plane, which we see in the projection. And then along the C axis, we're looking for an A glide. And that I've circled here with the blue lines. So we have here, it's going to be in the AB plane and we can see that it's a one quarter of the way elevated above the projection we see in the plane. We see the arrow here, which tells us that the translation part of the glide is parallel to the A axis. Then we have this dashed line over here. Remember that tells us that the, we reflect and then the translation is in the plane of this projection, right? That makes sense because the A axis is in the plane of the projection. And then in this lower diagram, we have this dotted line. And here we reflect, and then the projection is out of the plane of the projection, um, so up at us. This is what we look for in an orthorhombic system. Now, when we go to a tetragonal system, now all of a sudden the A and B axes are symmetrically equivalent. So it doesn't make sense to talk about or to use in the symbolism the symmetry elements along A and B individually because they're always identical. Instead, what we're going to do is first we've got the P that tells us about the centering or lack thereof of the Bravais lattice, P being a primitive tetragonal lattice. Then in every tetragonal system, the next thing we're going to see is a four. And so that four tells us that Parallel to the C-axis, we're going to have some kind of fourfold axis. It might be just a fourfold rotation axis. It could be a four-bar axis, that is a roto-inversion fourfold axis. Uh, or it could be, as in this case, a screw axis. So this tells us that we have a four sub one screw axis parallel to the C. And we don't have anything, we don't have like a divided by plane. So if it was four sub one over M, or over C, that would tell us that we have uh, some kind of plane perpendicular to the fourfold axis. In this space group, we do not. And we can see, if we look at this 
drawing over here, these sort of squares with the spurs coming out from each corner, that is the symbol for a force of one screw axis. In the second position here, we see two sub one. So we have a two sub one screw axis, and for a tetragonal, the second position tells us about the symmetry that is parallel to the A and B axes. And so uh, we have a two sub one screw parallel to the A and B axes. And in the drawing here, let's see, there's our four sub one screw. And there are the two sub one screw axes. And notice that they're parallel to the A and B directions, right? This projection we're seeing is looking down the C axis. And then finally, in the third position here, that would be the symmetry element that is associated with the face diagonals of the AB plane. Okay, so it could be an axis that is parallel to these directions, or it could be a perpendicular plane. In this particular example, the only symmetry element that we have that runs along the face diagonals are these, you know, full arrows. And remember, a full arrow signifies a two-fold rotation axis. So that makes the name of this space group P, 4 sub 1, 2 sub 1, Two. Trigonal is very similar. In a trigonal or a hexagonal system, they're both the same because we're talking about the same shape unit cell, the same Brave lattice. We start with a letter, P here meaning primitive. Then we will have the rotation axis associated with C. In the hexagonal unit cell, the C axis is the unique axis. So here we see that we have a three bar rotoinversion axis along the C direction. And if we look at our drawings here, that is this triangle with a hole in the middle. All right, so the triangle is the symbol for a threefold rotation axis. If we put a hole in the middle, that tells us it is a rotoinversion axis rather than just a proper rotation axis. All right, so we've got a threefold axis. If you see a three in the second position, you know you must be dealing with the trigonal space group. If you see a six in the second position, you know you must be dealing with a hexagonal space group. Then we go to the M. All right, and so that symmetry element this in the second position here, this is the symmetry element that is parallel to the A and B axes. And so it says that there's a two-fold rotation axis and a perpendicular mirror plane. Well, these, these red arrows here, that's our two-fold rotation axis along an A and B. Okay? And then where's the perpendicular mirror plane? Well, right here, this solid line is the mirror plane perpendicular to the A axis. And then these solid lines are the mirror planes that are perpendicular to the B axis. All right, so what do we do in the third position? Well, the third position now is the symmetry associated with the long diagonal of our rhombus, okay? This blue line right here. In P three bar M one, we just have a one, all right? That tells us there is not some kind of rotation axis. There could, in principle, be a twofold rotation axis here, but but you see along that long diagonal, there is no rotation axis. And by the same token, there's not any uh, perpendicular mirror plane. Uh, we do oftentimes see this drawing. This is a light line, and that doesn't signify a mirror plane. Now, but in the P3 bar 1M, notice in this one, we don't have any rotations uh, parallel to the A and B axes. But we do have, look at this two-headed arrow here. Right? That is a two-fold rotation that's along the long diagonal of the rhombus. And then we have this solid line here. That is the mirror plane that's perpendicular to it. So that's why the long name is P three bar one two over M. Well, in cubic, what we have is we don't have a unique axis anymore. So the key thing, the, this is the key to uh, recognizing you have a cubic space group, is in the second position here, that would be the symmetry element along the body diagonals. 
we have to have a threefold axis of some kind. It could be a regular threefold rotation axis, or it could be uh, a three bar roto inversion axis. You'll see threefold axis in trigonal, but those are going to come in the first position right after the letter. But if the threefold axis comes in the second position, then that's a dead giveaway that you're talking about a cubic crystal system. The first position in a cube is reserved for the symmetry elements that are parallel to the A, B, and C axes. In this one, we have a 2 sub 1 screw axis. Here you can see the 2 sub 1 screw that's parallel to A, and a perpendicular A glide. And uh, here, these are our glide planes, which you can see are perpendicular to the A, B, and C axes. Uh, and then finally, the third position here for a cubic crystal system would be the symmetry element along the face diagonals. And this particular space group, PA3 bar, doesn't have any symmetry along the face diagonals. Let's see if we can put this all together to recognize the crystal system, Brave lattice and point group of any space group from its short Hermann Mogwin symbol. So here's two examples. PMMA and P3M1. Take just a minute and see if you can answer this question. What's the crystal system? What's the Brave lattice and what's the point group? So PMMA. All right, what we see is I don't have any rotation axes higher than a twofold rotation axis, or it would show up in the name. So right away I'm like, okay, that can only be orthorhombic, monoclinic, or triclinic. Now, if it's triclinic, there's only two triclinic space groups, P1, P1 bar. All right, they don't have mirror planes, so triclinic is out. And then if it were monoclinic, I can have a mirror plane, but I can only have it in one direction. And so here I see I've got two mirrors and a glide. So this is definitely an orthorhombic crystal system. The Brave lattice is primitive orthorhombic because of the P. We can see that. And the point group is MMM. And the point group is usually quite easy to ascertain from the name because all we need to do is we need to change any glides into mirrors and any screw axes into proper rotation axes. So the A glide just becomes a mirror. Point group MMM. And this is a non-somorphic space group because we have a glide plane in the name. The lower one, P3M1, Okay, we see we've got a three. There's really only two crystal systems where we see threefold rotation axes. Either it's trigonal or it's cubic. Now, how you can tell the difference is if the three comes in the first position after the letter, then it's trigonal. If it comes in the second position after the letter, then it's cubic. So here we're dealing with the trigonal crystal system. The P tells us that it's a primitive lattice. Now, the interesting thing about trigonal, right? the defining feature of a trigonal crystal system is a threefold rotation axis. But there's not such a thing as a trigonal Brave lattice. All of the trigonal space groups can be represented with either a hexagonal unit cell or, in some cases, with a rhombohedrally centered hexagonal unit cell. And that has a primitive cell. That's rhombohedral. Here we see a P, so this is a primitive hexagonal Brave lattice. The point group is 3M. We generally will not write the 1 in the point group. Uh, that is the same thing in Schoenfle's notation as C3V. And because we don't have any glides or screw axes, this is a somorphic space group. All right, here's a couple of others. Why don't you take a minute and figure out crystal system, Brave lattice, point group, and then see if you can assign it as either somorphic or non-somorphic. I'm going to pause the video now, let you answer the question, then we'll come back and go over the answers. Okay, what are the answers? Well, the top one is a tetragonal crystal system. We see that from the 4 sub 1 screw axis that comes right after the letter. Because we have an I, this is a body-centered tetragonal Brave lattice. And the point group is not 4 sub 1 over A. We need to convert the 4 sub 1 to a fourfold rotation axis. We need to convert the A glide to a mirror. This is 4 over M. 
which in shown fleas would be C4H. And obviously we have both a screw and a glide, so this is a non-somorphic space screw. The bottom one, FD3 bar M, this is a cubic crystal system. And the F tells us that the Brave lattice is a face-centered cubic Brave lattice. Uh, we can recognize it's a cubic crystal system because the three shows up in the second place past the letter. So the D is a diamond glide. So this is also a non-somorphic space group.